So, back for some more practice for Cairns. Um, I'm going to be leaving tomorrow to go to Cairns now, so um, this is going to be the last last run of, of practice before it. But I'm going to try and get as much practice in as possible. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep keep playing games. I'm not going to bother with um, like future intros or outros or whatever. I'm just going to keep playing. Um, so then I'll be cutting the cut, cutting the matches together like, into, into separate videos. So it'll just hopefully just be a string of, of videos from then on. Um, but if you see um, with the table that I've, I've got up um, to track my progress, um, I've added something extra um, because I am still deciding um, whether I want um, bulletproof or not on on my Como. I've also um, added um, a lot more special attack into the Como because um, it was originally this, which was like enough to clang into clangorous, no, clang into clanging scales, KO a no bot crowd on, and the bulk did something. I think it was like. Plus two P blades or something because I'm hasty, um, but um, I think that ultimately more special attack will be better. This is that's the investment I had on my world combo, so obviously it did something. I think it was like clang into flamethrower on Metagross or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'm going to be using, um, and probably probably sticking with that for the rest of the time now. Um, so. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to still still be tracking Bulletproof or Overcoat. I'm still leaning towards Bulletproof, but I still have no idea. So I'm going to be tracking that as well as my wins and losses. So um, I also changed um, one of the losses to Game Plan 2 Predictable, because I think that um, that was actually the correct categorization for that loss. So um, I'm, what, 16, 20 something on the ladder? So, oh, I was going to say. So we're probably not going to find people quickly, so I'm going cut to the, cut to the games, but um, here we go. Um, so... What's nice here is I can just click that slot four times and have my, my team ready. Um, I don't know if Amoongus changes things. So here, here comes a Smiggles Xerneas. Um, so like I, I can pretty much flowchart this. Um, let's just fake out Geomancy. Don't get a speed or evasion boost. And everything is lovely. There are some people who spiky shield. Like some people... If you if like against this team, if you know my flow chart, you can play perfectly against it. It's a risky play perfectly, because um, if you spiky shield on the fake out to break my sash, and preserve your own sash, um, then that can be a bit more awkward and can change things in their favour. But it's, they've let me break their sash. We're going to just trade geomancies and now slug bomb and oh, I got evasion. Okay, so so this is yeah. So if if there's no evasion or sp like I guess technically speed, but they're not going to go for a lovely kiss because they're going to assume that I'm faster than the Smiggle, but they don't know that I'm not at the moment. So, um, I'm just going to stick with what the the flow chart is and just hope I hit, which I do. Um, oh, I'm actually faster. I didn't even notice that. Um, so that puts things even further in my favour. So, and the poison. So that's nice. That's nice. And then the flow chart here is to double into the Lunala because the Xerneas will always protect. Watch him not protect. <laughs> He's poisoned as well, so like the poison will put him into Sucker Punch So I think I'm pretty sure the game is is effectively over because of um, see there you go. Um, this doesn't KO Lunala, but it just puts it in range of whatever I want to do next time. Because he's going to psych up, but that's not really going to help him. Um, yeah, and and he knows it. So there we go. That's nice. Um, that's no predictions. Like because that that is like th this matchup has become quite flow charty. Like so Lazlo Xerneas has a lead with a Velfel in the back, and and a steal. Um, I did went, like uh, disregarding Togunamaru. Togunamaru wasn't actually that great as the, when that was the steal in practice. But um, but like uh, like the the so Lazlo Xerneas Velfel steal is very positive against this kind of team. So. Um, so yeah, I'll move on to the next one. I need to remember to be doing IO next. Um, okay, um, Ludicolo Kyogre is something I'm less experienced against, and I like I feel like it's going to be bad for me. Um, so what do I need to do against that? This looks like quite an awkward one, actually. Like, I, I, I want Xenia Civil, Como, and Superior. But I don't know if I need Salazzle. No, I, I think I'm going to go with Superior, Velfel, and then Como, and Xenia. 
Okay, so so this like this is good for me because like this is a bad position, but I want to learn how I can get past this bad position. So I need to double protect on the fake out, and there's not really much reason not to. But the, the, like this is this is a really awkward one where I have to go for loads of different traits. Um, he is a scarf Kyogre as well, so I get to see what he, like I get to burn the fake out and burn the Z move as well, which is lovely. Um, and he does does just lock in towards the back. He doesn't have any um, psychic terrain or Queen of Majesty or Dazzling, um, so I can safely sucker punch this Kyogre now. So I can go for Glare into the Ludicolo and sucker punch into the Kyogre. And Ice Beam into Water Spout probably shouldn't KO. or well, this probably doesn't even KO my Avel now. Um, oh, it does. Okay, fair enough. Um, but the new spell is really weakened, and now um, I can go into. Okay, I can either Clang or Geomancy, which is better. Because he is. Because uh, I'll be able to get my Geomancy or Clang before his. Um, I feel like Kamo is better because like, like it'll knock out the Kyogre and Leaf Storm into Clang. Actually, I want to learn if Leaf Storm and, like I'm gonna go into Kamo. I think it's probably better if, if I went into Zenith there, but I want to learn Clang into Leaf Storm against Ludicolo. Doesn't have any fairies on his team, so um, he's, he's got he's got Double Genie, which is actually quite funny, but it's it's not the the classic Double Genie. Yeah, like, like Geomancy's better. Like, he would switch his Kyogre and I would take a Hydro Pump at plus two. So, like, Xerneas being set up here was, is probably better, but, yeah, like, because this is for practice, I want to learn. And I want to see. I don't expect it to. Maybe, like, this is the increased special attack. Yeah, it is. Um, have you seen how they do actually um, increase the number? He just stayed in with Kyogre. That's, that's interesting. Okay, so that's going to be close. That's going to be close. I don't think it KOs Ludicolo. But let's see. Be strong, Kamuro. Oh, it did. Nice. Um, that was probably the increase in special attack. Um, I'm going to do that calculation after this um, to see. Um, okay, so I can... One of them probably has Tailwind. If I can get the Taunt correct, then I'm in a really good position. Um, if he's Assault Vest, I can just KO his Katana right now. Which would it be better to do? Glare would be safer against a trip. Like, so, 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 like, I could double the Cortana with Lee Storm on close combat, and I should be fine. But if he protects and tail wins, that's awful. Um, like, I, I'm in a really strong position. There's many ways that I can win, but I want to know if there's one that's the most likely to not go wrong, if that makes sense. Um... I feel like maybe, no, Sub and Taunt goes wrong if he doubles the Como. -o. Um. I think Taunt, the Lunala and Close Combat, the Cotton. Okay, so it wasn't Sash, which means that I think that was definitely the correct play, because this stops any Tailwinds or Psychups or whatever. Yeah, the, okay, so, so that was obviously the correct play. Um. And he's gone, so. Um, like, was was there a safer way? Like, so say he was Sash, and he went for Moonray's Maelstrom. No, he can't go for Moonray's Maelstrom, because he went for Hydro Vortex. So, that was something I could have taken into consideration as well, because I didn't actually think about that. I, I still thought he could still um, Z-move, but... Um, I'm going to see a plus two Leaf Storm breaking the Shadow... No, no, the Clang would break the Shadow Shield, and then the Leaf Storm um, would... Hit the Lunala. I don't think that combination would KO with the Shadow Shield. It was single target Clang as well. Um, although I refer to Clang as Soul Blazer's Clang, so I need to say Clanging Scales for Clanging Scales. Um, but yeah, that was that was pretty good. Um, what kind of what kind, what kind of win was that? Was that basic predictions or was that no predictions? There weren't any hard reads. Burning the Z-move here, like, it, it's much better when they Z-move into the double protect rather than um, fake out, because then they still have the Z-move active. Um, but yeah, because I know it locks into Water Spout Sucker Punch, but, like, he can obviously switch, but then that means that I'm not taking the Water Spout. Um, interesting that Water Spout still KO'd after that. Um, oh yeah, that's something I wanted to look up, how much Clang actually does to Ludicolo. And I can see if that combination actually does KO um, Ludicolo's, because that... 
it would be good to know if, if this was kind of what my flow chart would be against Ludicolo Kyogre to like go for the double protect, sucker punch, glare, etc, etc. So yeah, um, I think this is a no predictions. Maybe this counts as a base. No, th this isn't even a basic prediction. This this was like covering my bases, I think. So I think this is. I, th I think I'll treat this as a no predictions one. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna look up. Was it here? Oh, I already have Como up. Nice. Um, Let's the new one. One eight four. Yeah. Oh, one eighty. One eight four is not an EV number. Um, okay, so that that was comfortably KOing, and then. So the superior. Come on. Uh, okay, did I get like a high roll then against him with, where is it? Oh no, I got a mid roll, I think. Oh, yeah, mid roll. Um, so let's see. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get this up again. Um, and I need to remember to take it down, um, but let's see. Um, Coin Rush Soul Blaze against 156. 100% of the time. Wonderful. That's really nice to know. Um, I'm going to remember to remove this while I still remember to. And then I will move on to the next game. Okay, this is this is definitely a team I need to have at least a game plan against. Um, I feel like Volcarona puts things out of my favor because I only have two things that outspeed it. But then Superior doesn't really do anything. It can taunt the Tailwinds, I guess. But then um, Celestial doesn't do enough unless he sets up the Sun for me. I think that Sun boosted Overheat will get Volcarona. I'm going to look at that up now. If I can remember how to spell Salazzle properly. Um, oh no, it's not looking like it will. Yeah, because Volcarina's got good special defense off. Oh, not ideal. Fake out into Overheat though probably gets in. Um, that's going to be something I might look at. And actually, maybe, maybe worth changing to Hasty for. Mm, I'll see the roll afterwards. Um, I do want to leap with Salazzle. I don't know what else I want to leap with. It's either Xerneas or Eveltal. But Xerneas is negative against Volcarona. Eveltal's negative against if he leads Xerneas. And if he leads Coco as well. So I, I will still go with my own... Um, my own Xerneas as a lead. Okay, this, this is this is fine. So I can trade fake outs here, and if they foolishly trade fake outs, then I can encore them. Um, we saw my fairy fairy aura go before his drought, so I don't know if he's roaring or not. Might be a good idea to actually just take out this ground so the extra drill is freed up. Because he could have stuff like Roars, but let's... They don't usually, so I'm going to Encore the Fake Out as he tries to U-turn. I'm going to get the Geomancy, and I'm still in a good position. He says as he gets Roared. Um, right, so... I'm going to Overheat and Earthquake myself. This is fine. This is not as fine. Um... But yeah, like the, the oh, like normally on this team it's Source Dance. I don't like because you have Whirlwind and like Clear Smog and stuff. I don't think you should have Raw on um, on Groudon. So like that caught me off guard, but I think it's it's going to be unlikely. Um, obviously, like I was talking about Overheat and Moonblast, so the extra was freed up. Um, that was obviously better, but um, it means he doesn't have. He surely has Zenith in the back. I'm gonna double switch because I don't want to intimidate on extra drill because extra drill is important. Okay, that's fine. Um, if I get ground into earthquake range, that would be nice. 
Like, combination of foul play and Moonblast should KO Groudon. But I feel like he's going to protect it. But I don't think I want to hard predict that. I think I am going to still just foul... Oh, he did see. He would have let me KO his Groudon. That's good. Um, so, yeah. P-Blaze is not going to KO Xenos. But then, he'd have to flare, but it's not U-Turn. U-Turn doesn't KO me. Um, now we have this wonderful... Um, Wonderful knockoff speed tie, because um, I think I will be moonblasting this crowd on, and I think I should go for this. He sh probably should protect his Xerneas, but that's fine, because that will let me get in Excadrill against the Incineroar. This is going to activate Berry, though. He's going to fake out Xerneas here instead. Um, so what I want to do is I want to moonblast the Xerneas to put it into Sucker Plunge plus Earthquake range. if I switch into Excadrill here, because he has to fake out um, Eveltal to stop any potential knockoffs. He'll get his GMNC. No, he's a bulky one. Okay, that's good. Because um, now... Obviously, I can Iron Head. I don't think I want to switch to Eveltal and Earthquake. So... I think... I think I'm going to Earthquake my own Xerneas here. Because I don't want him to attack as I, as he predicts the Iron Head. So... Actually, I, can, I, I, don't, I don't need to um, Earthquake my own, my own Xerneas here. I don't know if this KO's Groudon or not. It might. Please do. Aw, oh, Ban's not coming through. Um, okay. I think I still Earthquake. And I Earthquake my own Xerneas here. Because this will still KO Incineroar coming in, which is fine. He's going to KO my Xerneas, but he's not going to KO my Excadrill. He needs to Moonblast to guarantee it now. And is that in Sucker Punch range? I'm not sure. I'm going to double check. In fact, I don't think I have time to double check. Um, has he got the timer on? He does. Um, so I have Life Orb now. But he was a slow Xenius, I think. So, I, I think he should be. I think he should be. Um, so assuming he is, what's the play? He's not in foul play range, though. I'll suck a punch and earthquake here, and he was good. So that's that's um, one of the nice things about life orb, and I I want I do find out that his ground is slower as well. So managed to win that one as well. Nice, nice. Um, that was definitely not a a one. No predictions. This would have gone way better if he wasn't raw ground on. Like swords dance is way more common. So, like the raw caught me off guard, but it's not going to be as as common. So this is fine. They always trade fake outs. They always get on cord. Because they always try to U-turn instead of hard switch, which is funny. Um, so yeah, like, say, say we're in that position, but he only has sword stance. So he'd probably P-Blades there, but then I'm in a fantastic position, because he has to switch Incineroar Protect. I, either Coco or Xenius takes a Dazzle, which is fine. Z Coco gets KO'd, Xenius. Um, is put in range of another one, and then I can just still overheat in Staz and Gleam. So, like, without Raw, I'm in a fantastic position here, but because of the Raw, it does change things a lot. Um, I'd have preferred to go into a Velfel there. But Earthquake and myself actually ended up working out quite nicely. Because overheat does, like, what, 60, 70, I think, to Groudons? Um, I need to double check that. But they are all being run careful now, so. Um, but the Earthquake on myself was nice. Um,. Double switching was definitely right, because he fakes out Slazzle to stop any potential encores onto the, onto the raw, and my Xerneas is bulky enough to be able to take the P-Blades quite easily. It was bulky enough to take two P-Blades, fake out, and U-turn, which is really nice. Um, if I was timid Xerneas, that wouldn't have happened. Um, 
if I'd have doubled the Groudon, that's probably out of range because he would be a bulky one. So I think Incineroar and Protect was was predict like pre like I want to say predictable. It's not predictable. Like that's the word I'm looking for, but also not because predictable is something else. Like able to be predicted, I think is the way of saying it. Um, so I could have knocked off and Moonblasted the Incineroar instead, but that's fine. Yeah, because he was slower than my Xerneas, which means he was super bulky as well. Which is interesting if other people are switching to bulky Xerneas now, just as I am as well. When I say just as I am, I already was. I've just gotten even more bulky. Um, but this was a good play. Because I either KO'd his Xerneas, because I live anything with Excadrill. And Earthquake myself here is, is correct as well. Because that put it into Sucker Punch range. So Moonblast into minus one Earthquake into Sucker Punch KO Xerneas. That's good to know. And that was super bulky Xerneas as well. Well, like, probably bulky Xerneas because it underspent mine. So that's good that that combination would KO. And yeah, then the game's just over. So there weren't any hard reads. This was this was basic predictions, I think. Um, yeah. I'm actually getting quite high on the ladder. Uh, let's have a look. Where am I now? Yeah, top 20, like, 1757, so, um, what's that, 88 away, or 89, I guess, away from, from the top, so, I'm trying to get to that.